by way of Guanajuato, Mexico. Here is the six-time national champion and the 2022 WBC U.S. Amateur Champion, Kristek El Flaco Bazaldua. Bazaldua. I'm fresh this morning, uh, this afternoon. All right, nothing behind here. Keep it clean on the belt. Have any questions? Make sure we ask. Okay. Uh, keep it clean and follow my instructions at all times. Yes, Touch gloves. Sir. All right, here we go. So both fighters coming in inside the agreed 137 pound catch weight limit. But as you'll see. In just a moment's time, the huge height and reach disparity between them. And Chris Tech Basil do with the tall figure, boxing out the southpaw stance. And Roy Fruto hittable, but he comes out fast. Four round scheduled. You had mentioned Basil Dua being one of the chief sparring partners of Virgil Ortiz. Not an envious position from what I've heard from no. the sparring partners of Ortiz. <laughs> Rumors are he's hung extremely well with him in the gym for the last couple of years. Manny Robles wouldn't invest his time if he didn't believe this young man had all of the attributes to go a long way. Already looking for the uppercut with a rear hand sensible against a shorter opponent. Fruto has got gaps down the middle as he just looks for that right hand to the body. Fruto using some unorthodox head movement to try and get inside. I mentioned at the open that you know, he's going to try and come in low, throw the overhand right. You want to change levels with a guy who's got that height and reach advantage the way that Chris Deck has. Dude, just looking for the, the timing on that rear hand, just lands a stiff jab. Speaking to his manager, Rich Moore, who's the, the husband of Ramler Ali, who's on the card a little bit later on. Said it's about just getting him to really start to believe in that power, and he just landed a short right hook up close. And I think the glove of Fruto may have touched down there, but the referee says box on. Minute 40 on the clock, and another left hand lands down the middle. And Fruto in a little bit of trouble, and in the corner here, and Basil Dua starting to let the hands go. Fruto hangs on, just spares himself a moment there. The referee was having a good look at him. I believe that should have been a knockdown. He's definitely hurt. And he likes to go out on his shield, Fruto. He's a real warrior. He praised for his heart by previous opponents, and he will go out swinging, but he's up against it here as Basil Dua in the ascendancy. Looks for a left hand again, finds another uppercut through the middle. Basil Dua doing a great job of maintaining the distance, letting his hands go. A lot of times with these young fighters, they'll, they'll smother themselves when they're going for the finish. He's not doing that. He's maintaining that length and landing his power in the end of the punches. Huge amount of leverage on that left hand as well, just watching the head of Elroy Fruto snap backwards, he just takes a step off for a moment. Some heavy leather in these first couple of minutes, 45 on the clock. I like the composure of Basil Dua, he's maintaining that distance, he tried to get him out of there, he said he got a very durable guy in front of him, taking a step back, going back to the jab and the straight punches, beautiful left hand there. You tend to see him in his debut, established the the long straight shots, and if opponents start to get closer, he uses that hook to spin off and get himself back to center in. But he hasn't been under that kind of pressure that he's needed to, to really use the hook in the exit yet. He's been in full control through this first round. And Elroy Fruto looking a little bit dazed as he walks onto another short hook. Yeah, that check right hook from, from uh, Chris Deck has been a great shot as Fruto has been lunging in. Fruto trying to find a way through the front door, but all one-way traffic so far for, for Basil Dua. Well, his chin held up. We're, we're trying to get a look and see if that glove touched down.
the start of round two. Now Roy Fruto is up against it in that opening round. He has fought a couple of south calls before in uh, Lev Jackson and recently Eli Martinez, giving them both good fights, but a different level of opponent in Basil Dua so far. Yeah, watch out for that rear uppercut from Basil Dua. He's trying to time the rushing of Fruto as he comes in. He's coming in a low position, so trying to pick him up with that rear-handed left uppercut. It's a nice technique from Basil Dua. Yeah, he tries to, tries to rush with like a jab right jab but unfortunately he's kind of starting those attacks a long way out and, and leaving himself open lovely one two again from from basil do it fruto holding the shots well so far and there it is that's that shot having a height and reach advantage is so helpful in a young man's career you can maintain the distance every fight starts at range every round you go back to opposite corners so that range is always going to play an important role and Basil Dewey is doing a great job of setting a line in the sand in front of him and throwing his power shots over it. Yeah, because it's important. You, you don't want to be giving up too much ground as the, as the taller fighter, too, because you can give these small guys momentum. That's what Fruto wants here, but he's not being allowed it at the moment. No, not at all. Basil Dewey is great. doing a great job of hitting, taking a step back, making Fruto reach even more than he needs to because he's so, because he's so much shorter, and then cracking him on the way in. Nice straight left hand to the body from Basil Dewey. That's smart of him. Got a guy with an iron chin, took some big heavy leather in the first round, go down to the body, weaken him a little bit. He's a good friend of Diego Pacheco, who's headlining in Monterrey, Mexico, July 7th on the zone against Manuel Gallegos. And well, hearing that the plan could be provisionally for Basil Dewey, if he gets through this fight unscathed, he could be on that other card. That's a lovely shot, just sinking it into the body. Credit to Fruto, he's taken these well so far. Plenty of leverage behind them. Yeah, you said from the open that Fruto was tough. A lot of his opponents had said so too. And we're definitely seeing that because he's got hit with some clean shots upstairs and downstairs. When you're the smaller fighter, you just need something exceptional. You need to have the quicker hands, the quicker feet to get into range. Unfortunately, it looks like he's being beaten in every department, but he has got the heart, he's got the desire, and he's just trying to spin himself off the ropes, give himself some space to work. You know, you've got a battle of rattle, a real estate like this. Fruto, he, when he does get inside, he's working so hard to get there. He needs to get something done. Right there, he got tied up, pushed away. He's got to take advantage of when he's able to get inside. Basil Dua so far winning the range war as we tick down the seconds in round number two. Just looking for that jab again. This is the, the double and the, the left hand. Fruto just can't get close enough. Just a slapping left hand off the the right elbow. Target practice for Chris Tech Basil Dua so far. Deep breath from Elroy Fruto. He's got the scope at 6 1 to, to go up through the weights. We, we could see him at 147, but by the time he's in his late 20s, of course, at 18, making the weights not going to be too much of a, of a problem for him. Yeah, he's got some huge physical advantages over, over almost everyone else in the division at this point. If you notice, those two really nice body shots in round number two. Round one was all head from Basil Dua. Second round, he went, to, went back to the corner, probably got a little information in there and said, go down to the body. He did it perfectly. I love seeing a guy execute different things as the fight wears on, especially for a young fighter like Basil Dua. Scowl from Fruto as he steps up for round number three. The fight has not been broken out of him yet. Fruto just getting a little bit close for the first time in the contest, just managing to get past that. That rear hand of, of Basil do a little bit of success for him, something to, to hang on to. It's smart of him to go down to the body from Fruto there. Landed two good sh body shots with both hands. There, he tried it again, but then got smothered. Just the lower he, he stays as he comes in, the more he makes Basil do a punch down, the, the more likely he is to land something over the top. Just getting there first, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of times with the shorter fighters, as they move their head, the taller fighters' hands will start to creep down to follow the head, and it leaves openings for overhand shots. Like that, which just missed. This is money punch Fruto looking for the overhand right as Basil do just re-establishes the, the range, but he gets caught with one over the top there, but now just starts to let his hands go. So the problem is that when he does land, he's not putting a dent in, in Basil Dua. 
he's just going to walk straight through him as he is now. Presses him back, catches one in the return five, but it's pea pe shoots of stuff against the heavy artillery. Kazadu was stuck in a nice left hand to the liver there. Fruto took it well. I was just about to say, one thing I would like to see from, from Basil Dua is more jabs. You know, he's got that height and reach advantage. That's something that he's always going to have as an, an advantage in these weight classes. Probably until he gets to 147 or 54, if he does get that high, he's going to be the taller man. So having a good stiff jab, especially from a southpaw position, is a great weapon. That was all about Aaron Aponte. He'll be in with a shorter fighter in Xavier Madrid next up. But just occasionally, he's been guilty of abandoning the, the jab and letting shorter fighters get close. If he does that in the next fight, he could be in for... A really hard night over eight rounds in our second contest of the night, but well, just a little bit more success for El Fruto in this round. Not enough to win the round, and Basil Dura is just starting to find a home for that uppercut through the middle again as they tie up. Fruto just trying to make it a little messy here, just spoil and, and give himself a little bit of time to breathe. That's what he needs to do, like you said. He's, he's outclassed, he's got, he's got the physical disadvantage as well. He just needs to make it rough. You know, he's a tough guy, he can take a couple shots on the way in, but once he's there, just push your man around. He's, he's young, he's 18. Use your man strength. I think that's been one of the surprise elements of Basil Dua at 18, at the height he is and at the weight. You maybe assume there was some physical developing to do, and of course there is, but I think the guys in the gym have been surprised just how physically strong he is, how able he is to, to hold his feet and trade with some world champions in, in bigger weight divisions than, than he is. You can see his physique. He's, 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 not quite mature, but you can see the muscular development yeah. on him, even for an 18-year-old. And you can just see that frame. He's going to grow and grow and grow. He, he, he could put on a lot of weight yeah. and, and be in multiple weight classes. He's a real warrior, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last two rounds in between corners, but he's been scowling at his coach, like, let's go, get, get me back out there. He's going to have to give it all in this fourth and final round. Landed plenty clean. Basil Dua hasn't really managed to shift his man so far, but he's been in full control through three. Another box tick for him. He gets through the next three minutes unscathed. And we we're speaking to Eddie Hearn a little bit later on about the plans for him this year. He's on a long-term deal. They're going to try and box him as, as regularly and often as they can build his fan base in Mexico as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fourth and final round. Important to seeing the, the success, the rise of Diego Pacheco, so it gives him just that tangible path to success. Coming from a deprived area in South Central LA, not had an easy life growing up, so he wants to repay his dad and make an easier life for his family. But he's seen that Pacheco is he's getting close to contender status, and he will know now that with hard work and perseverance and that path laid out for him with match and boxing, that it's possible for him in the next two or three years as well. Early stages for him. That's put a foot wrong so far. Nice right hand by Fruto. You mentioned how he gets to see his gym mate and friend Pacheco going through it. It's different watching something on TV and being like, oh, I want to be like that. But when you're in the gym with someone dropping sweat, trading punches, and you're seeing their development and their success, it really spurs you on that much more. Jab again, just finding the, the left uppercut off the jab. Short right hook on the inside. Fruto just steps off for a moment. You know, and this is where when you have a good jab, it can really help in a fight like this. Because it's the punch you don't see that hurts you the most. That jab can be that blinder that makes you that lands that good shot that, that puts the man away. He, had, he doesn't really have that right now. Do you like to see a few more feints for, from him as well? Just to try and set that shot up and disguise he's putting a lot into a lot of his shots. With a guy like Fruto, feints may not be that effective because they're not really reacting anyway. He's just fighting. <laughs> some, some guys, some guys are so raw that they don't really react to feints the way that a seasoned fighter might. So I, I would just love to see a jab upstairs, downstairs, set things up. When you have a height and reach like that, why not? 
But that comes with time. And it's good that he's getting rounds in. I even think about my own career. I came from kickboxing where you didn't jab. Yeah, right? the first one in, in the UK, did you fought in the UK? I fought in the UK. In the, uh, no, I actually never fought in the UK. I fought, I fought in Canada. But yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a missed list. There's something on box right there. Yeah, yeah, that's, in the UK. I never fought that guy. That's oh. God. Yeah, that's, that's incorrect. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, box work's not really reliable for anything besides pro, pro boxing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> in my early kickboxing days, I gave up my height completely, and I fought like I did in kickboxing. I was very aggressive. I threw a lot of combinations. I had to learn to jab, and it took a bunch of fights and many rounds and, until it, uh, it, it fell into play. And I think Basil Dewey is kind of going through that, too. Darren Richards, who's uh, in the corner of Ginny Fuchs. I think he was down in his uh, fighting days as an opponent of Roy Jones. I think he was stopped in one or two rounds and they, they came to him and he said, no, it definitely wasn't, that wasn't me. Yeah. Only in boxing, really. It doesn't happen in any other sport. Oh, Nice uppercut there as Fruto looked for the right hand, just got caught up the middle inside of it. 15 seconds to go in this final round as Basil Dewey just tries to let the hands go again. Fruto just intent on tying him up, trying to work on the inside. Spirited performance from Fruto, but he has been outclassed here. As they both just try and stand and trade through, so just looking for a right hand, lands one down the middle, good finish for the man from British Columbia, but he's been outclassed almost in the entirety of those four rounds, and Basil Thua rolls on, and well, provided there are no injuries, doesn't look like he's really taken too much clean at all. We could see him on that Monterey Bill in a few weeks' time on the undercard of Diego Pacheco, but I'll ask Eddie Hearn about that a little bit later on in the show. Fruto walked back to his corner like, he had some more rounds in him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think he'd just keep going for as long as he was upright. Well, a lo long way to go for, for this young man, but 18, all the right pieces are in place for him in the structure and the support around him. And uh, here's some of the highlights out of the last two or three rounds. Impressed with what you saw? Yeah, I saw some really nice work from, from uh, Chris Deck. I mean, he's 18 years old. He's getting the rounds, and he had a very, very tough guy in front of him. He really you have to break someone like that and you know it's very difficult to do in a four rounder he was close to getting i think he scored a knockdown in the first round he was close to getting a stoppage in the first round but after that it was really just uh just complete control from from basil dua fruto really didn't have much answers for the height the reach the body punching excellent stuff from from chris deck though good development fight so the first of three contests down here on before the bell, we'll get the formalities in just a moment. I don't think there'll be any surprises on the scorecards. David Diamante just checking them through now. Two more fights to go. Aaron Aponte and Xavier Madrid next up. And then Ginny Fusion, India Rodriguez. Looking forward to that one before all the fights start live on the zone. Seven o'clock local time here in New Orleans. Jeremy Hill and Mark Two Sharp Davis will start us at seven o'clock. Let's get the uh, result here. Here's David. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of action here in New Orleans, we go to the judges' score totals. All three judges score this battle identically, 40 to 36. For your winner, by unanimous decision, he's still undefeated, Kristek Ilfaco Basel 